Pediatric femoral shaft fractures. Treatment of pediatric femoral shaft fracture varies. It can be casting or it can be surgery, depending on the age of the patient and the pattern of the fracture. If the fracture femur occurred in a child before the walking age, you got to worry about non-accidental trauma. Suspect child abuse. This is the summary for the treatment of pediatric femoral shaft fracture. From 0 to 6 months old, you treat it by pavlic harness. From 6 months to 5 years, you treat it by immediate spica cast. And from 5 years to 11 years, there are many options for treatment of the femoral shaft fracture. It can be fixed by flexible rods, by a plate, or by external fixture. And from 11 years to near maturity or at maturity, you can treat it by a plate or by external fixture. Near maturity or at maturity, you can treat the patient by anti-grade rod through canteric entry. Child less than six months old is treated by a pavlic harness. Child between six months to five years is treated by a spica cast. Moderate evidence supports early spica cast or traction with delayed spica cast for children aged six months to five years with a diaphyseal femur fracture with less than two centimeter of shortening. A spica cast is not used for patients that have shortening of 2 to 3 cm. If there is excessive shortening or potential shortening, there will be loss of reduction in the spica cast and the child can be treated by traction and delayed spica cast or by a different alternative. In very unstable fracture, you're going to use traction with delayed spica cast or external fixture. From 5 years to 11 years, there are many options for treatment of the femoral shaft fracture. It can be fixed by flexible rods, by a plate, or by external fixture. To use flexible IM nails, the fracture must be axially stable and you can use it in children between 5 to 11 and do not use it in children more than 100 pounds or in children older than 11 years. An alternative technique different than flexible IM nail should be used in older children that weigh more than 100 pounds or if the child is more than 11 years old. For the flexible nails to work, the fracture must be short oblique or transverse, and it's probably better if the fracture is in the mid-diaphysis area. In comminuted fractures or very distal or proximal fractures, it may be hard to control the fracture with a flexible IM rod. Approximately 50% of fractures treated with flexible nails have about 15 degrees of malalignment. The nail size of IM flexible nail is determined by multiplying the width of the isthmus of the femoral canal by 0.4 and the goal is to have 80% fill. How about the submuscular plate fixation? You can use it in children more than five years old and in patients that are more than 100 pounds in weight, you can use it in very proximal or very distal fractures where the flexible rod won't work, especially if the fracture is unstable. You can use it in severe comminution when you will use the plate as a bridge plate. How about external fixture? You can use it for open fractures if there is associated vascular injury, if the fracture is significantly comminuted, or you can use it in polytrauma patients.
With external flexure, there is increased risk of refracture after removal of the flexure. The main blood supply to the femoral head is the deep branch of the medial femoral circumflex artery. The branches are near the piriformis fossa and it is vulnerable to be injured with a piriformis entry nailing. Osteonecrosis of the femoral head can occur with an open proximal physis. Periformis or near periformis intra-rigid nailing is not usually recommended for the young child. If the iron rod needed to be done, it's better to go through a greater trochanteric entry, which also can have its own complication, such as coxa valga or premature fusion of the greater trochanter apophysis. Rigid trochanteric entry nailing may be an option for children at or near skeletal maturity. Complication The most common complication in younger patients is leg length discrepancy with overgrowth of up to 2 cm in patients younger than 10 years old, and that typically occurs within 2 years of injury. Leg length discrepancy can occur from excessive shortening following a cast treatment. Don't accept more than 2 cm of shortening. Monitor the kids for the development of compartment syndrome following a spica cast. When you do traction and the delayed spica cast, the proximal tibial traction pin can cause recurvatum due to damage of the anterior part of the tibial tubical apophysis. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.